What a gorgeous looking soup. Today, we're gonna make this. Today, I'm gonna be making a beautiful soup. This is green chili soup. It's a dish that is traditional in Mexico and it's every bit worth your time. Green chili soup is robust in flavor. It's delicious and it's very, very healthy. This is a dish that um, even though we're working with very basic ingredients and very few ingredients, the flavors that come from it are incredible. The flavors just pop. It's a fun soup to make. It's good at any time of the year. Use it as an accompaniment to a meal or by itself. Either way, you've got a fantastic dish. Now let's get in the kitchen. I'm gonna show you my green chili soup recipe and I'm sure you're gonna be impressed. Come on, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, our ingredients are very basic and simple. There's a few items I don't have out here. I don't have cornstarch out here, which I like to use as a thickener. And there is a little water that goes with that. So, you know, there's, it's a few minor things that you don't see. What does matter are these chilies. So I'm gonna start with a beautiful load of green chilies there. You can choose any kind of chili you want my preference is the poblano. A good second to this is going to be the Anaheim chili. For our liquid, I want to use a stock, and I'm using a vegetable stock this time. I recommend this on this particular dish. It's really good tasting this way. Uh, I've got some lime juice here, a white onion, some garlic, and just a little bit of salt for this dish. And from there, we have absolute deliciousness going on. So it's a simple thing we have, but it has to be prepared the right way. Let's get on. It's time that I get these prepared to be cut. Now I'm not gonna cut these up with the skin on. On this dish, I wanna remove the skin from these and I'm going to do that by charring them. There's several ways you can char these, but folks, let me tell you something. Chilies are tough. They really, really, really are tough. They're a desert plant. They're designed for heat, okay? And the thing of it is, is to get that skin off of them, you have to take extreme measures. You can place them under a broiler, okay? That's one way. When you see the skin starting to blister, turn it over, do it on the other side, then put these in a plastic bag to sweat. That's one way to remove the skin. However, you miss out on the charring. The charring is a good flavor. When you cook that skin until it turns a little black and then you just pick it off, that is flavor, folks, and it's a really good flavor. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these directly onto my burner and char off that skin. You can do this also on a gas grill. You can do it on a charcoal grill. Uh, you can do it over an open, uh, open fire. However you want to apply heat to these, you can do it. Uh, in fact, even a propane torch will work for this. Get your skin scorched, remove it, and we'll move on to slicing them up. I'm finishing my last poblano, scorching that skin off. See, I've got all of these done. Now all I have to do is just pick off that loose skin and I'm ready to cut these. Now this is all in flavor building right here and it is an important step. Go ahead and do this. Once you get everything charred, go ahead and just take that skin and pull it away just like that. Once you get all of that skin removed, then we move on to the next step. And this is all it really takes. Some little black specks on it aren't going to hurt anything, okay? And having some paper towels nearby, if it to get too much of it on your fingers, that's kind of handy. I have removed the skins from my chilies and now I have to decrown them. So just peel the, skill, the, the, the chili skin back away from the crown and throw away the crown and seeds. Uh, pick out any seeds on the inside and when these are laid flat, they're ready to slice. Okay, that's all there is to it. The next step of this recipe is cooking off our onions. Now we've already done that with the chilies when we developed flavor just by scorching them, okay? Now they're nice and tender. They've got all of that flavor built into them. 
but I need to do something with these and I'm gonna do that in this pot. I'm gonna heat it up, put oil in there, put these in it and cook these until they're turning translucent. All right, and that's a medium heat to do that over. When we have those cooked and translucent, we put the chilies in there and the rest of the ingredients and get busy cooking up this beautiful soup. Now this is about where we wanna cook these onions down to. We got a little bit of browning. They're starting to turn a little translucent. They're still pretty white, but they're just getting that, that little change going on. About another five minutes of cooking like this, and I'm gonna add in my chilies and the other ingredients and let that simmer for about an hour, everything together. Okay, this is up and cooking. It's going to continue to cook for 50 minutes. Now, 10 minutes into the cook, I'm going to come in here and just pull these garlic cloves out. They only need to release enough of their oil to flavor this, and after that, I want to get that, the white pot out of there so it's not part of the visual effect. All right, that's all there is to it. It's a matter of time right now. It is time now to take this, which I have finished heating up, the cook is beautiful on this. The, the onions in the liquid are hard to see. Out of the liquid, you can make them out. And it's just gorgeous. It has a beautiful flavor. The liquid has turned green now. So we have this kind of a greenish colored broth. And I'm about to put half of this into this blender and I am going to blend it until nice and smooth. And I'm gonna pour it right back in there we're going to mix that together and boom, our soup is ready to go. It needs one last thing though. I'm going to thicken it using cornstarch and that'll be like a quarter cup of cornstarch to about a half a cup of water. Mix them together really well and then pour them in while this is boiling and that will thicken it up for you. Okay, make sure you stir it well while you mix that in. You don't want your cornstarch to get lumpy and weird on you. So the quantity of everything that I've used today starts out, let's start right here, our onion. One medium to small onion. It doesn't take a lot of onion on this one. You're gonna need four to six cloves of garlic. I have two tablespoons of lime juice, four cups or one quart of vegetable stock, and two pounds of green chilies. My choice, poblanos salt to taste on this one and also you're going to want to thicken things up and give it a little body you're going to want a little cornstarch and water and on that it is just depending on how thick you want it how much you use folks my soup is made it's beautiful and thick look at that oh wow such wonderful consistency and color and i can't wait to bowl this up and make it just what it can be. Now I've also got some cheese and some uh, crema to put into this. Now if you don't have crema, you know what? Sour cream is basically the same thing. It's the American version. It's just uh, cultured cream is all that is. Beautiful soup bowled up. Put some cheese or the crema on that. If you don't have crema, just use sour cream. Just a little bit of it in there and try that with it. It's magnificent together. go getting that the crema kind of streaked through it and uh, that brings out some really neat tones really neat flavors in this mm. also you know I'm not shy about this the cheddar cheese you put that in there and let it streak through it also and then that adds its own little sharp bite to it and it really kind of lifts this soup up it's a good flavor it's a really tasty green chili soup if you like green chilies if you like that kind of a dish this soup is really going to do it for you it's delicious it's bright fresh tasting and it's one mm, my mouth is watering for more it's one that's just really good Folks, thank you for watching. Please take a look at the rest of my channel. Texas Cooking Today has hundreds of recipes waiting for you. My channel is uh, chock full of tutorials as well as these videos, which are the shorter ones. And then on my website, which you'll find the link in the description there, you're going to uh, find my recipes, shirts, other good things there. Take a look at that. My recipes, okay? They're on my website. Now, I don't put out your average everyday recipe. You know, you, I had somebody comment to me recently. He said, 
Why would I do that when they're available everywhere for free? There's a little difference. Those that are for free, and I've printed them out, you have to. Little tiny thing in the corner of the piece of paper that's covered with ads most of the time. And then it's not very descript. Not mine. Mine are worth having. Okay, so when you get one of mine, it's designed to be printed in such a way that it can be put into like a three ring binder. Look at this. Look at the quality on it. Look at the, how clear this is. The imagery is beautiful. So they can be printed, and this is the way I've designed mine, is so they can be printed back to back. And then you end up with, you know, a complete recipe that works in a book. And it comes out absolutely beautiful. Pictures that depict everything that you need to do in the recipe. Now, not all of them are exactly that way, but a lot of them are, and I'm getting more and more done this way. And I'm putting a hard push towards good quality recipes that give better instructions than everybody else's. And that's the reason I do them this way. Thank you for watching, and please have you a good day, all right? Bye-bye. Ooh, yeah.